after a 14-hour plane ride, a 10,000-mile journey east, and a 40-minute cab ride outside of London, I am finally here. This is Leavesden Studio in Hertfordshire. And behind me, believe it or not, lies the heart of a global phenomenon. I'm Angela May, and we're about to go on a tour of a lifetime. This is HBO's first look, an exclusive sneak peek at the world of Harry Potter. Join Harry at the start of the Order of the Phoenix back in Privet Drive, and as always, he and Doug seeing eye to eye. Where is your mum, Potter? <laughs> is she dead? <laughs> is she a dead Potter? <laughs> <laughs> Fundamentally, Voldemort, the Dark Lord, has returned, and the Minister of Magic are denying his return. And Harry is the only one who knows of his existence. Mm -hmm. So he's got a fight on his hands to persuade everyone else that this evil presence is back. This film is very much about Harry's mental state and the fact that I think Harry's sort of really losing his mind in this one because he's having it um, invaded by Voldemort. And so, I mean, it's that he's a lot more angry and he's a lot more isolated and alone. This connection between me and Voldemort, what if the reason for it is that I am becoming more like him? I, I just feel so angry all the time and what if after everything that I've been through something's gone wrong inside me what if I'm becoming bad I want you to listen to me very carefully Harry you're not a bad person you're a very good person who bad things have happened to and the story fundamentally is about this those years when we're teenagers and we suddenly look at the world in a slightly more cynical light and we feel we want to rebel, we want to get angry, we feel let down, we feel misunderstood. So there's a streak of that that runs right through this story. Mm -hmm. So Dan in particular, Harry, has got a quite a complicated journey through it. Despite his terrifying encounter with the Dementors, Harry faces being thrown out of Hogwarts and as a result finds himself on trial here at the Ministry of Magic. Charges against the accused are as follows, that he did knowingly and in full awareness of the illegality of his actions produce a Patronus charm in the presence of a muggle. And it is here that we meet a new character, the very pink Dolores Umbridge. It's so silly of me, but it sounded for a moment as though you were suggesting that the Ministry had ordered the attack on this operation. That would be disturbing indeed, Madam Undersecretary. This is why I'm sure the Ministry will be mounting a full-scale inquiry into why the two Dementors were so very far from Azkaban and why they mounted an attack without authorization. The Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge, is convinced that Dumbledore is plotting his overthrow. And so he sends Professor Dolores Umbridge to Hogwarts to teach Defense Against the Dark Arts in order to prevent the kids from doing anything and to keep a watchful eye over, over Dumbledore and to keep an eye on the school as a whole. Pardon me, Professor, but what exactly are you insinuating? Uh, Last seen on the big screen in Nanny McPhee, Amelda Staunton scored an ace with a critically acclaimed performance in the social drama Vera Drake. So tell me, what's it like playing the villain? It's 
very nice, actually, because she isn't a villain, really, in her own head. Um, and um, it's very nice playing someone who, on the surface, is extremely funny and not really to be taken seriously. And then, um, then it all begins, so it's great. it's great. And then it all begins. Yes. It sounds a little bit sinister, even now you say it with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Just one question, dear. You've been in this post how long? Exactly. You applied first for the Defense Against the Dark Arts post, is that correct? Yes. But you were unsuccessful? Obviously. Dolores Umbridge is a uh, she comes from the Ministry of Magic, and she has um, she's come to Hogwarts to um, to cleanse it really, and to make it um, a better place, a pinker place, a happier place, um, and to stop. I think to stop the children having as much power as they have, um, and I think she wants to make it neater and have more order. I think she feels that the children have much too much freedom. And they really shouldn't have that because um, that's not how you learn. You have to be told what to do. You have to repeat what she says. And it's, um, you know, that's how she wants things. She wants things in order. And there's no order here. But she has to create order. <laughs> well, I can't imagine why you would need to use spells in my classroom. You're not going to use magic. You will be learning about defensive spells in a secure, risk-free way. What use is that? If we're going to be attacked, it won't be risk-free. Students will raise their hands when they speak in my class. It is the view of the Ministry that a theoretical knowledge will be sufficient to get you through your examinations, which, after all, is what school is all about. And how's theory supposed to prepare us for what's out there? There is nothing out there, dear. Who do you imagine wants to attack children like yourself? Oh, I don't know. Maybe... Lord Voldemort. As you can see, this is this is where all the professor sits. This is Dumbledore's chair. This is all very grand. You want to have a seat in Dumbledore's chair? Yes. Try it out. See how it feels. <sighs> Check if I just sat here. I've been here for six years and I've never <laughs> sat in Dumbledore's chair. Shall I pour you a drink? Oh, lovely. Yeah, thanks. Oh, that's really happy. I'm so happy. With each of the Harry Potter films, the sets get bigger and better. But it's always reassuring to see the ones that we've come to know so well. Both Dumbledore's office and the Great Hall behind me are actually always here. They don't get tidied away once the film is finished. It's actually quite amazing. Take five, pick up. And action! It is huge. And the, phenomenon is hu uh, the phenomenon is huge, and the world that Joe has created is huge. And um, in this film, we get to see the Ministry of Magic. And the Ministry of Magic is where the wizarding government is really basically the seat of the wiz wizarding government. And uh, at the film's beginning, we see Harry going there uh, because he performed magic in the Muggle world. Mm -hmm. And that's just no and that's a no no. So he's being put on trial. Another set we know well is the Gryffindor common room. It is here that Hermione and Ron planted the seed in Harry's mind that action must be taken, especially if they're to stop Professor Umbridge from running amok. Enter one youthful, wide eyed, well intentioned bunch of students, namely Dumbledore's army. Dumbledore's army is sort of uh, this sort of team of sort of students that want to sort of protect themselves. Sort of Harry sort of teaches all these different sort of defence uh, spells and um, sort of to train us for the sort of the big fight at the end. She's turning into a bit of a rebel, to be honest. She um, she is the founder of the DA, which is stands for Dumbledore's army, which is kind of a kind of secret rebellion. Hi. So. You all know why we're here. We need a teacher. A proper teacher. One who's had real experience defending themselves against the dark arts. Why? Why? Because you know who's back here, Toshpot. So he says. So Dumbledore says. So Dumbledore says because he says. The point is, where's the proof? 